part five. In this segment, we're going to be discussing what can we do to reduce stress and anger during the toilet training process. That's because yes, some of us do get stressed or angry while we're toilet training and that's normal. And there are things that we can do to reduce the level of these negative emotions. So I'm gonna give you some tips and tools and I hope that they're helpful. Tip number one, remember that you as the parent are not in control of your child's ability to be toilet trained. So what this means is we have to actually we have to actually step back and remember that the child is the one who's going to have to be trained. And we can't force this to happen, we cannot make it happen. And since we can't force it, and it's not really up to us to make it happen, that reduces the pressure on the parent. So if I as the parent feel less pressure, guess what, I'm also gonna feel less stressed and less prone to anger. So remember that I'm not in charge of my child, but I am in charge of myself. And therefore what I want to do is I want to actively, not in a, not in a, okay, I don't have any choice here, but I want to choose to reduce my level of stress so that the whole process will go a lot smoother. Tip number two, stop training and take a break. So what this means is that really, if you're finding that your stress level is through the roof and you're really getting angry during the process, it may mean that you need to take a break and it wasn't a good time to start or that you need to get some help or tips before you start in order to make the process more manageable for you. That's okay. Sometimes parents come to me and they ask, but if I miss the time, that window, when they first wanted to be trained and I don't do it then, maybe my child won't be trained. Does that mean I missed it completely? And of course, if we're rational and we look at it in a um, not a hysterical parent way, then we can step back and say, of course the child's gonna be trained. And it's just a matter of when and how but it's okay to take a break if you need it. That's fine, your child will get trained. It's gonna happen. Tip number three, maybe you need to use a different approach. Now, sometimes we start with a method, an idea for how we're gonna train our child and it turns out it's not working so well. So stress, anger, high. And we don't want it to stay that way. So sometimes it's simply a matter of doing some research and figuring out which approach or with which method is really going to be the most useful and helpful here. Now, I do discuss this in coming vid video segments, so you can look that up in part six, seven, and eight to get some ideas. Now, tip number four is we need to know from the get-go that Accidents are a normal part of training. Now, not every child has accidents during the toilet training process, but most do, and it is normal. And what we wanna know is that accidents do not say that my child is not gonna be trained or that there's something wrong with my child. That's simply not true. And if we understand that that's the case, that having accidents is normal, it does not mean my child will not be trained, that can reduce the stress and anger level for the parent. Now, tip number five. We may want to review what's normal for this age group. So typically when we're training a child and we're talking about the age of children being trained, we're talking about between ages two and four. And during this time, kids, well, they're not really children. They're really still in babyhood. Okay, um, developmentally, they're not gonna enter childhood until age six. So they're kind of still at the end of babyhood here and it's normal for them to be immature. So sometimes we just have to review what to expect from a child this age and then our stress and anger can be reduced just from understanding. Tip number six. 
find someone or something to help you release stress. Just don't make that someone your child. So what I mean by that is you may have to pick up the phone and call a friend. You may want to talk to your spouse or another family member, but you want somebody who you can speak to that's not your child because the child who's being trained is going to need from you a lot of support and a feeling of calm. So we don't want to release the stress onto the child who's being trained. However, we can utilize the other people around us for support. Another idea also is not somebody, but something. So for example, you know, people sometimes like to squeeze a stress ball. That's something that we can do. Also, taking a pen and a paper and writing down whatever it is that's upsetting us when we feel stressed can be very helpful. Even just taking a pen and scribbling on the paper is actually a release. It's a way to release um, negative emotions. And that can be helpful in terms of just not releasing it onto the child that's being trained. So now that we know these tips and we can be a little bit calmer, why don't you stay tuned for part number six, where we're going to discuss some methods for toilet training and how to approach it in a healthy way.